from the number you've dialed. You have 333 minutes. Your call is being processed. Thank you. Hello, is this a good time to speak with Christopher Reynolds? This is Steve Conger in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Juno, let me just see if he's in a minute. He was just taking the rubbish out. Hang on a minute. Okay. Great. I think I'll, he was expecting you 9.30, but he should be back before that. Oh, that's fine. Um, should I call back in about half hour? Um, or just before, in fact. Uh, he's just back right now. Oh. Hang on a second. <laughs> he's, he's back right now. So I'll just pass you up for one minute. Oh, gosh. Hi. Hi. Am I a bit early? You said you 9.30 Swiss time, is what you said yesterday. But look, I've just walked in, having deposited the rubbish and seen a fox on the hook. I'm speaking near the Eurotel. You know the Eurotel? Oh, I remember the Eurotel. Okay, well, about 100 yards away is that, and a fox had just crossed the road from under the streetlights. And the road is just clear of snow at last. Anyway, uh, Steve, it is Steve, is it? Yes. Good, Steve. Nice to hear you. Uh, Steve, um, you said yesterday you wanted me to read John Corlett's um, meditation. That's right. Would you like me to do that? That would be terrific. Terrific? My God. Um, well, it's damn lot. I've, I've found vague, some notes on mine, by the way. Oh, good. But not the Hiroshima one. And I can read you an, one of mine, if you don't mind me, sort of slightly putting things together and making them up as I go along. Oh, that, isn't that the I way they to, always are? Let's go ahead on uh, John Collette. That's terrific. Okay, you say when. Um, the recorder is ready. Oh, my God. Say one, two, three, go. Oh, one, two, three, go. Our lives are what we make of them. Within a few years, all you people will be leaving school and setting out in a new chapter in your lives. And it is not going to be as different as you think. However, this is not what I want to talk to you about this morning. What I want to draw your attention to is the fact that an awful lot of so-called grown-ups, many of whom are really only children with grown-up bodies, and an awful lot of these grown-ups spend an awful lot of time complaining about their own lives, how uninteresting their lives are, how they never meet any interesting people, how dull their jobs are, how small their pay is, how silly their wives are, how idiotic their children, how unreliable their cars, how tasteless their food. Well, all this may be true, and a lot more. But if they're complaining to other people, and invariably they do, they're complaining to the wrong person. They should be complaining to themselves, for they are themselves to blame. Our lives are what we make of them. And if they are dull and uninteresting, frustrated, colorless, and unsatisfying, it is because we are making them so. Our lives are what we make of them, and it is no good blaming those mysterious people, they, at whose door we like to lay so many of our misfortunes. It is no good blaming God, who is only too ready to help us to put our lives in order, and to see us enjoying them if we will let him. As Shakespeare says in Julius Caesar, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. What, then, must we do to lead full and fruitful lives about which we will not wish to complain? Well, the first thing, and this is the first step in being really grown up, is to understand that our lives are what we make them, and the credit for a good life is ours, just as the blame for a bad one is ours also. We are not all the same. We are all different. We have not all got it in us to be leaders, nor should we have. Most of us will be followers of one sort or another, 
And to be a good follower takes takes much character and courage as to be a leader. We have not all got that kind of mind that makes a scientist, the sensitivity which makes an artist, or the coordination and quick reaction which make a sportsman. But there is no one who has not got qualities, gifts and talents of one sort or another. And we must find out and know what our own talents are. If the second thing we must do if we are to lead full and fruitful lives is to know ourselves. The third thing we must do is to be ourselves. It is astonishing how few people have the courage and self-confidence ready to be themselves. Yet, unless they are, they can never have full, fruitful and happy lives. For a full, fruitful and happy life is a life of self-fulfillment. A life in which the qualities, gifts and talents we possess which are our own, are developed and used by us to the full. So many people spend most of their time and energy trying to be somebody else, trying to keep up with one's onesies, with the Joneses, for instance. Never mind about the Joneses. They are somebody else. You can never be like them. Do not try. Be yourself, and you will be a much better person than you will ever be by trying to be like someone else. Know yourself, and with God's help, Fulfill the nature of your own being and be yourselves. Our lives are what we make of them. And that is the end. Terrific. Okay, well, that is what John Collette wrote. Right. And uh, so, did it come out okay? Yes, it did. Did I stutter a bit? I, I took a little time turning the pages and I couldn't walk around because I'm holding the telephone. Normally I would walk around a bit. <laughs> well, what, what I did was um, I put this into a computer and I'll be able to take out that pause. Oh, well done. Right. Very clever, Steve. Um, now, I did scrabble around and I found the, uh, a few hints because I never actually wrote out all my... Uh, meditations. I just put a few hints. I'll give you one if that's of any use, because uh, BB uh, 